Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. good. Amen. A couple of you remember that. All right. Um, this morning I finished with a, a, a phrase that you find in the, in the Torah portion. Hamakom Asher Yivhar Hashem. And in English that translates to the place that God chooses. So it begs the question, when we serve God, once you've entered into the saving knowledge of Him and who He is, where is the place that God has chosen? Where is that place? It's right where you are, wherever you happen to be. There, in that moment, in that time, in that space, you begin to serve the King. Because it is Him who led you to salvation. It is Him who led you to walk with Him. It is Him who led you to become a part of the, the congregational family that you may be involved with in. Moses puts it this way. Um, in, in reference to because this Torah portion goes over the tithes and offerings, and I have elected for Arab Shabbat and Boker Shabbat not to get into that specific area. But tonight I want to leave you with that note. In Exodus chapter 25, verse 2, Hashem Elohim told Moshe, Tell the Israelites to bring me gifts, and you shall accept gifts for me from every heart that is so moved. Now on the outside, it looks like you should only give tithing if you feel like it, right? Only if it's in your heart, on the outside. This is what the impression is. Only if it's here. But the reality is that every time you give a tithe, every time you do a service, every time you offer clothing, time, or energy, this is you giving a tithe Amen. to the kingdom. Right. Tithing is not incidentally a voluntary thing. This is not something that God says, if you feel like being, if you feel like signing up and, and, and following, and it's kind of like when we join the military. You, you volunteered, right? But really, our, our volunteer service was more of a means to get out of a, a situation of our, of our uh, youthful existence. And yes, we were following in the footsteps of our grandfather and our uncles and, and so on and so forth, and the tradition of joining military. But hey, let's go see the world, get out of the neighborhood. Um, and pick up some discipline along the way. And so it, it did more than just getting us out. Our, volu our voluntary service developed who we were because we gave of ourselves, we gave of our time, we even gave of our life. And for some of our service members, of uh, blessed memory, they gave the ultimate price. But a tithe is not a voluntary thing. It is an instruction from our king. It is an, an instruction that is something that you yourselves will reap the benefits of. One of the rabbis, he often says, if you have no money, give a button. Every year he says this, give a button, give a button every year. And give, the, the point is to give of yourself, to give of who you are. And that is the point that Hashem is saying, from the heart. That means let it come from you. You don't have to be Rockefeller or Trump to, to give. You can give of just, about, just as valued an offering from your heart by giving of your time, your talent, 
we're clothing our energy. It is also an ethical mitzvah. As messianics, we define the word mitzvah as sacred obligation. Sacred. That means it's not something that we simply take lightly or simply, you know, I'm dropping two dimes in the bucket so I can get two dollars. This isn't what it is. Although you can, the Bible does say you can challenge God on this and he will show that his word is true. But it is an obligation. Now on the other hand, many of the Messianics, they, they pick and choose which of the sacred observations they will do, the rituals, such as, you know, head coverings, non-head coverings, uh, prayer shells, non-prayer shells, zit seats, non zit seats, and, and so on. They pick and choose which of those particular traditions they want to observe. But the tithing, the walking in the footsteps of, of Messiah, these are sacred obligations for us. Sacred ob uh, observations. That means it's vital to our growth and our illumination of the dark places of this world. It's, it's vital to us testifying of the goodness of our Messiah, the goodness of our King. We are obligated to participate in the broad mitzvahs the categories of tikkun olam, of repairing or making the world better than when we found it or than when we entered it. Because I, I have to be honest with you, if you're okay with going through the highways and byways and the condition of, of, the, of humanity is okay with you, then I'm going to honestly pray for you. Because we simply shouldn't be okay with it. Yeshua put it this way in the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy earth. I'm, come on, does anybody else know it? Yes. The, the idea, and this is an old Jewish idea, is that we should bring the attributes and the behaviors and the moralities of heaven to here, to earth, to make earth a dwelling place worthy of God, to make earth a dwelling place able to receive His holiness, His grace, His prosperity. So it is for you and I to tikkun to along to make the world better than when we found it. By character development and self-improvement and reaching out constantly like the zit seats that you happen or to be wearing or not wearing. Constantly reaching out and keeping in mind the Shema. I will pay attention and love God with all that I am. And I will pay attention to love my neighbor, the stranger, as myself. And I will pay attention to love me as much as I love God. To honor God. We bless others as we have been blessed. We love others as we have been loved. We, we, we give, even though I've heard somebody say, but my, I, I want to give, but my, my bank account is depleted. The rabbis would say, give and give and give and give until he causes those seeds bring forth fruit. And this is of your love, this is of your of your dedication to his kingdom, this is of everything that you are. You give. If I don't have love, 
give love anyway. Keep giving love until you see the fruit of it begin to bear, begin to prosper, begin to grow in your life. I don't have compassion. Then be compassionate. And keep doing it over and over and over again until you start to see it in your life. Because you have to start at some point planting those seeds for them to grow and bear fruit. Anybody who, who's grown anything agriculturally will understand this. The, the only plant that grow, grows pretty rapid is the tomato plant. But then again, it's not there next year. And you have to replant it again. You have to dig the ground again. Drop the seeds again. Water again. Keep the bugs off again. Make sure you have no rabbits in your yard again. But my mother-in-law, God bless her, she always, in, in the old house that they had, she was always fighting these, these four rabbits that lived under her porch. She didn't want to kill them, but she just wanted them to leave her plants alone. And sometimes you and I have to keep the rabbits off of our plants that we're doing out there. And the rabbits would be your, you know, the, the, the self that doesn't feel like loving today. The self that doesn't feel like serving today. The self that doesn't feel, I just don't feel like it. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Love anyway. Amen? Amen. Amen. May all of our hearts be so moved to fulfill these obligatory mitzvahs that we begin within this season to see the fruit of these seeds that we are planting. Whether they be in helping to clothe people, helping lift people up, time, energy, whatever it may be, may you begin to see the, the fruit of it. And may your hearts be so moved that the abundance of His joy, His mercy, His hesed just begin to flow through you and through your life. There is a tradition amongst the many, many, many names for our King and our God. And I remember I used to adore when, when Rev. St. Iskell would post the, the name of God for the week or the name of God for the day. I don't remember how her thing was or the time frame was. But one of the beloved names for our King is Ha Makom. Y'all say that. Ha Makom. And that is the place. Right? That is the place. God is the place where we find solace, where we find peace, where we find compassion, where we find comfort, where we find love, where we find... And you can go on and on and on. Just, and sometimes God is where you'll find correction. Right? Because you've been coming up with justifications to behave carnally, or well, I don't want to go there because you know that, that brother with the floral shirt, he always shows up and he wants to sit right next to me. You know, or whatever other excuse you can come up with. Um, my brother always says his goldfish had a cold. You know. But God is the place He's not the place for your excuses, though. He's the place for your revelation, for your enrichment and your growth and your increase and your comprehension. Poor guy. He was sleeping. 
God is the place where we find all these things, and God is the place where we are enter into the deepest relationships with our friends and the family, both spiritually and physically, that He has given us here on this earth. It is only in God that we can have these deep connections without them becoming immoral or perverse. This is the place where we find the state of absolute peace and absolute consolation and absolute gratitude for the gifts that we have been given and the gifts that we have in each person throughout our life. And I will be honest with you, Iska and I see each and every one of you here and some of you there as gifts, as talents, as blessings from the King. Yes, and even you. Yes, even you. Are you. Are you sure? Yes, quite positive. Double blessing. So cherish, be grateful for the gifts that God has given you, both in people and in your life, and in who you are, because you are a gift. Yet we are not automatically given. understanding of this. We are told in this portion that the eternal your Elohim will bless you in the land that the eternal your Elohim is giving you as a hereditary portion. If, there's always an if, if you heed the eternal your Elohim and take care to follow his instructions. And I word everything carefully right there because it's not law, it's instruction. Okay? But you know, when I was young in, in our relationship, I used to toss out the instruction manual all the time. I've got this, I got the picture there, I can figure it out. And it never really worked out so well. I would end up with a bolt or two extra. And the thing would sometimes wobble, or maybe a wheel would fall off while I was driving. So God has given you an instruction manual so your wheel doesn't fall off. So perhaps you won't go through life wobbling. Amen? In order, in Deuteronomy 15, 4 through 5, in order to reach this place of perfection of godliness, we must observe his instructions. We need to see our lives as a vehicle of truth and compassion, consciously doing good to all those who we come across, consciously. That means you have to choose to do it, even when you don't feel like it. But it's more than just simply looking at these moments of repair to the world. We are commanded to heal the world. To heal broken people. ignore the power of personal healing. In healing other people, we ourselves will begin to heal. One of the greatest teachers of his instruction is doing it. You know, one of the greatest providers of, of experience and know-how is OJT. Or is it on, was on, on, the, yeah. on the on the job train? Yeah. Yes. Pay attention, Michael. You have to do it. Amen. Uh, I can't love other people because I don't love myself. Right? Again, it goes back into that. Begin to love others, and hey, 
you'll start appreciating who you are. It, it's, an, it's an ironic thing. Hey, I'm all right. I'm not too bad after all. You know? Yes, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're amazing. You are who he created you to be. So, in this particular parsha, it talks about choose life. And in that statement itself, it is to look at ourselves capable of healing in a profound and godly way. In a kosher way, as we went over this morning. Doing things kosher. In order to reach this place, or to access these things, we need to make time to bless people, make time to love people, make time to spend time with each other and with the stranger. Make time. Make time for your children. Make time for your wife. Make time for your husband. Make time for the stranger and the spiritual or carnal brothers that God has brought to you. The work, yes, it can be challenging and sometimes painful. As humans, we want to draw a deep connections with everybody really quick. And sometimes you're just not ready to ride a bicycle, right? Sometimes you have to fall a couple of times before you get how to balance. I remember Years ago, a particular dance leader I knew, she would take every sister under her wing and just hold them as close as possible. Almost so close they began to suffocate each other. And then when friction would arise, because iron sharpening iron, right? They're developing, they're growing. She would get so distraught because her and that person weren't close anymore. And upon examining scripture, it says, you know, iron sharpens iron, bear each other's burdens. But when you grow into the kingdom, you're not necessarily going to remain in the place where you entered. At some point, God is going to promote you and move you to a different area of ministry. And it might be in an entirely different branch of his kingdom. Although you might be raised up and made into a pillar right there. One of the main uh, laborers in that area of the field. Regardless of the situation, give each other room to grow, room to mature, but love each other all through the journey. Even in the difficult seasons, love each other. The Hebrew word, Zar, spelled Zadi Reish, means narrow, which stems from the same Hebrew root as mem, resh, zadi. This narrowing implies the experience. Perhaps we need to get rid of any baggage that narrows our experience, and we allow ourselves to ascend to higher promotions within the kingdom, deeper understandings, deeper connections with people, where our intentions and our actions become connected and inseparable, where we truly become one with our divine creator. So this evening, I encourage you in your zedaka, in your giving, 
in your tithing of your talent, your time, your energy, your strength. Let it come from your heart. Let it come from who you are. Don't let your flesh cause yourself to become narrow or narrow-minded. But love people just as Messiah loves you. Bless people just as God blesses you and somebody's alarm is going off. May God bless each and every one of you this week. May he increase 60-fold everything that you put into your walk with God in the branch of the kingdom that you are connected to. May Elohim bless you and may Elohim keep you. And may he make his face to continually shine upon you. In Yeshua's name I pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen.